Good morning, students, and welcome to Operations with Radicals. A very radical lesson for you today as I get ready to go for a nice afternoon hike. The joys of being retired. So today we're going to talk about radicals. Now, we have to know what parts of these, what, what do you call these things? So this number here, this tell you, tells you which route you're going to take of the number that's under this sign. What's this sign called? Well, this is your radical sign. This is the radical. The number that's under the radical sign is called a radicand. A radicand. And the number here in this little crook of the radical sign is called the index number. What does the index number do? Well, it tells you which route you're going to take. So for this radical, I want the third root or the cubed root of eight, which you should know is two, because two times two times two gives me eight. If there is not a number in here, it's assumed to be a two. And really what that means is the half power of this number or the square root. This is the same thing as four to the one half power. You should know that from your rational exponents. Okay, so how do we multiply, divide, add radicals, and what are like and unlike radicals? Oops, sorry, getting a little excited here. Okay, so let's look at this. Root three times root three. Okay, so let's say you don't know how to multiply radicals, and, and I will show you how to do that in a second, but this would be three to the half power, just like I did here. This is four to the half. This would be three to the one half power times three to the one half power. And you know that when you're multiplying and the bases are the same, you add the exponents. So that would give you three to the power of a half plus a half, which obviously is one. So that's three. So alternatively, you can multiply. You can multiply the numbers that are under the radical sign together. So I'll say, or this is equal to the square root of three times three, which is the square root of nine, which is obviously three. So we get the same answer. It's just a different approach. So the same thing can happen here. Let's say I had three square cubed root of two, so I don't want to multiply together. So that would be like two to the one third times two to the one third times two to the one third. Sometimes it's good to put it into um, the rational exponent, but you don't need to do that for this kind of work. So two times two times two is eight. So I'm looking for the cube root of eight which is two. Or if you had this, if you would have said, oh yeah, that's two to the power of a third plus a third plus a third, which is two to the power of one, right? This is the same thing, power of one. It's not an exclamation mark, but that might be true as well. Now we need to talk about whether something is a like radical or an unlike radical. That's the same thing as talking about like fractions. You can't add a third and a quarter together without having a common denominator. Neither can you add radicals that don't have the same radicand. So like radicals, like these, these all have the square root of 5. So if I wanted to add these together, and that's not what the question is asking, I'm just stating what a like radical is. Um, I could add just the numbers in front here. So I would have 1 minus 4 minus a half. So that would be minus 3 halves root 5 if I wanted to combine these. That's not what I'm saying. Unlike radicals, the square root of 5, the square 2 root 3, the cube root of 5, the root of 5, these, these two are the same, right? They're exactly the same as a matter of fact. But the cube root of 5 is not equal to the square root of 5. If you wanted to add these, you cannot add these together because they have different index numbers. Okay, so getting that out of the way, we're going to talk about making entire radicals into mixed radicals. 
So what does that mean? So an entire radical looks something like this. An entire radical. Um, let's say the square root of 8. That's an entire radical. Another entire radical could be the square root of 12 or the square root of 20. Get the idea? Everything is under the radical sign. So we have one radicand, we have no number in front, and we just have these wonderful little radicals. But we can write this as a mixed radical. So I'm going to make it into a mixed radical. And this is something that you need to know how to do well because it is something that you're asked to do frequently in order to combine radicals and also to simplify later on. So how do I write this as a mixed radical? I want to be able to write this, number 8. I look at the number 8 and I say, okay, what is the largest perfect square that's a factor of 8? So let's go over here to the perfect squares. What are our perfect squares? So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. So these are all perfect squares. We've squared the number um, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So when I look at 8, say what is the largest perfect square number that I can take out of an 8? And that would be 4. So root of 8 can be written as the square root of 4 times 2, which is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, because when I multiply radicals, I just multiply what's under the radical sign. So the square root of 4 can be written as 2. So 2 times the root of 2 would give me the square root of 8. In other words, I could bring this 2 back in here, by squaring it just like this, right? because square root of 4, this is equal. And you can see how I've come down to this line. So let's look at the square root of 12. What's the largest perfect square in 12? Well, again, it has to be 4, because 4 times 3 gives me 12. So this is the same as the 4, time, four times 3. The square root of 4 Let's write it this way first. You don't need to do this step when you're doing the math. You could probably do it just in your head. Or I'm just showing you how I'm getting from here to here. And likewise, the square root of 20. I did all fours this time, but we could make up some other ones. So this is square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 times root 5 is 2 root 5. <coughs> So let's make up one of our own. Let's take 16 and we're going to multiply it by 3. So 16 times 3 is 48. So I want to know, I want to go from, well, let's put it up here, square root of 48, I want to write it as a mixed radical. So I told you I took 16. So this is the square root of 16 times 3. The square root of 16 is, I'm going to skip a step this time, so I have 4 root 3. So that's how you write as a mixed radical. Let's try something just a little bit harder with a negative sign out front. So let's take um, minus, mm, would be a good number here, minus 1 over 5 times the square root of 125. So you'll say, oh, well, this is already a mixed radical. Why would I need to write it as a mixed radical? It already is. Because this number here, 125, is not in lowest form. I can find a perfect square that's, that is a factor of 125. So you want to make sure, if you looked over here, you'd say, oh yeah, 25 goes into 125. How many times? How many times does 125? That would be 5, right? 5 times 25. So this is the same thing as minus 1 -fifth times the square root of 25 times 5. And of course, 25, the square root of 25 is 5. So I bring it out here now, it's multiplied. And then you would multiply this to give you minus 1 root 5, or minus root 5. 
Okay, so that's how that's how you work with those um, mixed radicals. So the next thing we're going to look at is <coughs> how to write backwards. Let's go. I'm going to go from a mixed radical to an entire radical to an entire radical. You don't normally go this way, but it is part of the exercise in this section. I don't. I don't think it's really an important skill to learn because you would never use it. So let's say I had three root two. <clears throat> I want you to write it as an entire radical. That means I have to put this back in here. So three is the same thing as the square root of nine. So you would square this number, put it under a radical sign, and then just multiply these. So the square root of 18 is the same thing as three root two. Okay, so let's go on to Part two here, we're going to talk about multiplying radicals. So we've already done some of this, right? I've already shown you how to multiply. Multiplying. I'm going to multiply some radicals here. So let's say I asked you to multiply, um, well, let's just go to the basic. Let's say root of m times the root of n. So it doesn't matter what m and n, they could represent anything. It's just m times n. So let's take a look at a really easy one. 3 root 5 times 2 root 2. Well, you might say, oh, just a minute. No, that's not that easy because you put a number in front. No big deal. All you do is multiply those numbers together. So 3 root 5 times 2 root 2 is going to be 3 times 2. I'll write it out a long way first. 3 times 2 times the square root of 5, times the square root of 2. So that's going to be 6 square root 10. Okay, so that's that's not hard, is it? What about if this was a radical as a binomial? So let's say I had um, 2 root 3 times 4 root 5. Oh, not times, just a sec. I'm going to put a minus here minus 4 root 5, and I'm going to square this. Oh my goodness, you say, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Now you could write it out the long way, or by now you should be saying square the first number twice the product. I did this in another previous lesson, and you're going to square the last number. So if I square the first number, 2 root 3 squared, that's 2 root 3 times 2 root 3. That's 4 root 9. I'm going to write it out this way first, but later on you might be able to go right to the answer because the root of 9 is 3, right? Okay, now twice the product. What's the product of this and this? Minus 8 root 15. So minus 8 root 15 times 2 is minus 16 root 15. And square the last number, negative times a negative is a positive, 4 times itself, or 4 squared is 16, and root 5 times root 5 is the root of 25. So now simplify these. So this is 4 times 3 is 12. This I can't do anything with. 15 is the smallest form of a radical here. I, there's no perfect square numbers in here. And 16 times the root of 25 is 16 times 5, and that would be 80. So I end up with 92 minus 16 root 15. And that's how you square a binomial. Okay? The last thing we're going to do, and that's adding and subtracting them. So again, in order to add and subtract radicals, they have to have the same radicand. That's the number under the radical sign. So I'm going to do the hardest one. And if you can do the hardest one, you can do any of them. So when you look at this question, and this is going to be kind of a tricky one the teacher is going to throw at you some point, probably on a test. I'm just going to ask you to add these together.
and you look at this and you say, well, I can't add any of it together because look, 12, 27, 40, 75, there's not one radical or radicand that is the same. So I can't add them in the form that they're in right now. But what you can do is take a look at each of these numbers and see if you can change this into something more simple. So again, we're going to go back to uh, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. And look at each of these numbers, and we're going to write them as in lower form, or lowest form. So 12, and that's 4 times 3, so this is minus 3 times the root of 4 times the root of 3, right? That's the same thing. Minus 3 root 4 times 3. Root 4 times 3 is 12. The 5, that's 9 times 3 under here. I'm just going to write this one like this. You can see the different way it could be written. So 9 times 3 minus 6. 48 is 16 times 3. You need to know your times tables. And 75 is 25 times 3. And now you should see that all of these, all of these radicals that we started with, they all have root 3 can be the radicand. So when I reduce them, that's what I'm going to get. So minus 3 times the square root of 4, that's minus 6, because this is 2. 2 times minus 3, minus 6 root 3. I take the 3 out of this 9, that gives me 15 root 3. 16, I take out a 4, that's minus 24 root 3. 25, I take out a 5, times 2 is 10 root 3. And now all I have to do is simplify this. So I have minus 6, minus 24, that's minus 30, minus 30 plus 25. So that would be minus 5 square root 3. So you can see that you started off with something really, really complicated here. It looked like there was nothing in common. And then after you wrote it as a more reduced mixed radical, you ended up with everything under the root of 3. That allows you to combine these numbers together. And there you go. I'm off for a hike. I hope you have a great day. Um, subscribe to my channel, please. Let me know how the lessons are going for you and if I'm helping you. And I'll keep making them for you. Take care. Bye.